Well, thank you all for coming today. My name is Neera Jantani, State Senator for Ohio's 6th Senate District. I want to thank you all for being here. Uh, let me first start off by thanking Gene Smith, Athletic Director of The Ohio State University, for hosting us here today. Uh, today I'm in announcing the introduction of a bill to legalize college athletes earning compensation from their name, image, and likeness. This bill will be uh, introduced today into the Ohio Senate. We are filing the bill right after this press conference and it will be introduced at our next non-voting session. As a graduate of The Ohio State University, I saw how hard student athletes worked both at their academics and their sport of choice. Uh, since that time at Ohio State, uh, I strongly believe that students have an inherent right to their own name, image, and likeness. I saw students, even who were on scholarship, struggle to get by, including some of the biggest names. It's important to remember, not every student athlete is on a scholarship um, and therefore uh, has, has a restricted ability under the current rules and laws from benefiting from their own name, image, and likeness. It's also important to remember that no other student at our universities in Ohio have this restriction. Uh, it is only placed on student athletes. Now, once we introduce this bill, I think we should note that not every student will get a Nike deal or a Coke deal. Many of these will get deals uh, back home in their hometown where they are uh, significant, where they are proud of, of their student athlete for making it uh, at Ohio State, at the University of Cincinnati, at another major institution in Ohio. Uh, their local automotive dealer uh, may want them to appear in an advertisement. Uh, their local bookstore may want them to do a book signing. Their local restaurant may want them to appear at an event. And as a student athlete who has an inherent right to own their own name, name image, and likeness, they should be able uh, to do that. Uh, today is a big step forward for the rights of student athletes in Ohio. Uh, we, are legal, we are seeking to legalize it today with this bill introduction, uh, but we are doing it in a reasonable and safe manner. Uh, I'd also like to note that as of today, 16 states have legalized name, image, and likeness ownership for student athletes uh, in our country. Five of those go into effect in July. 10 other states have bills currently introduced into their state houses that would legalize their name, image, and likeness. We are in fact only one in 11 states in America who have taken no legislative step towards name, image, and likeness ownership for student athletes. That changes today. Important to note, Michigan has name, image, and likeness for their student athletes. I think the athletic director would agree for me, we cannot let Michigan win at anything. Now, I do understand that the NCAA and Congress may act. I can't speak to the NCAA, but I know as a state elected official, I am not confident in Congress's ability to get this done. Uh, the fact is, is that one third of American states uh, have NIL, and regardless of what the NCAA or Congress do, uh, those states likely will not repeal those bills if enacted, and therefore we need one of our own. So let me talk about the mechanics of the bill. For all of you in the crowd, um, in the back here, I've got uh, Abby and Nicole and uh, Ricky over here. They have copies of the bill that uh, they will distribute uh, to you after uh, this press conference. Uh, but this bill will affirmatively prohibit any university or intercollegiate athletics association from preventing a student from participating in athletics or otherwise be punished if they receive compensation as a result of their name, image, or likeness. It does allow them to receive professional representation. Uh, and as one of the safeguards, we require them to inform their university 15 days prior to entering uh, into any contract. The bill as it currently stands has an effective date uh, of July 1, uh, 2021 of this year. Uh, this bill does not require schools or universities to do anything to enable name, image, or likeness uh, beneficiary opportunities for students. Uh, in the bill also, we do restrict that no student athlete uh, may receive a name, image, or likeness compensation uh, from marijuana, alcohol, tobacco, or casinos. So let me thank Gene Smith. Uh, when I approached the university a year and a half ago about this, we began having discussions. And here we stand a year and a half later 
uh, not just with Ohio State having been involved in the process, uh, but working together hand in hand in crafting this legislation uh, to now a place where we are here, uh, where they are in support of this bill. Uh, I think that is a extremely high uh, mark to show uh, how Gene and the entire university cares about their student athletes and their students. And I wanna thank uh, Gene and the entire university for working with me uh, on this. Uh, we really did this together. Uh, briefly, I also wanna thank uh, Harlan Sands, president of Cleveland State University, who sits on the NCAA and also uh, president of Youngstown State University, Jim Tressel, who also uh, had very large conceptual discussions with me uh, about this and were very helpful in, in framing uh, this legislation. Uh, we will get this done. Uh, we will get this done to the benefit of student athletes um, here in Ohio. Uh, it is now uh, my honor to turn it over to Senior Vice President and Wolf Foundation Endowed Athletics Director of The Ohio State University, Gene Smith. Thank you, Senator Tony. Uh, let me uh, thank all of you for being here. And I gotta give a shout out to Chase. Happy birthday, Chase. All the work you do to set this up. And uh, shout out to our women's volleyball coach, Jen Oldenburg, who's also here. Uh, let me thank all of you for coming. Um, I'm so thankful that the Senator worked with us on introducing this bill. And uh, we wanna encourage other legislators who support the bill and are hopeful uh, that it will be implemented prior to uh, July 1. Uh, as, as stated, uh, this bill will allow our student athletes to monetize uh, their name, image, and likeness. And for me, uh, going back to May of 2019, when I had the fortune and opportunity to co-chair the NCAA federal, state, and legislative working group uh, with my good colleague, Val Ackerman, uh, the big uh, East commissioner, uh, I've learned so much and, and I embrace the thought and the idea of our student athletes having this opportunity. So I'm glad we're here today uh, in the state of Ohio where uh, this potentially will happen uh, with this legis legislation. I'm hopeful uh, that the NCAA Council uh, in this June meeting, I think it's June 22nd, uh, will pass NCAA legislation. I was blessed to be a part of the NCAA Legislative Solutions Group after we made our recommendation from the uh, larger working group in October of 2019 to allow this to occur, uh, legislative solution groups were developed in each division. And I was fortunate to be a part of the division one legislative solutions group. And I still believe uh, that the legislation that was uh, teed up for a vote in January should have been passed in January. I still believe that it still should be passed this month. However, uh, considering it might not be passed, uh, I'm so glad uh, that the Senator stepped up to work with us to, to have a piece of legislation in Ohio uh, that will allow our student athletes uh, this opportunity. Uh, we will spend the month of June uh, educating our, our student athletes, uh, all of our stakeholders on the proper way uh, to, en to engage NIL. Obviously, there's, there's things that our student athletes have to learn. Many of them have already learned those things, uh, but we'll have to teach them a lot of uh, 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 things that in order to ensure uh, that they do this the proper way. Uh, under the leadership of Kerry Holt, one of our senior associate athletic directors, uh, embedded in the uh, Leadership Institute, uh, we'll develop our NIL program and we'll have an announcement about that later this week, uh, so you have a lot of details around that. Uh, but our intent is first and foremost to educate our student athletes and then we'll, our coaches and our trainers and strength coaches and others as we uh, move forward. Uh, so again, uh, I wanna thank uh, Senator Antoni for this great work. Um, when you think about uh, the fact that uh, we're here uh, in May and, and have an opportunity to potentially have a piece of legislation um, in place by July 1, it takes leadership. And, and he stepped up in a big way to provide that leadership. So uh, thank you so much, Senator. And I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, Athletic Director. Uh, with that, we will take questions. If you can come to one of the side mics. Uh, we are limiting questions today to, to this issue and, and this bill only. Keep a mask up or down? Uh, I think uh, probably up. Okay. Yeah, for both of you guys, number one, uh, Senator, how, what was the- If you don't mind, just for my edification, I know Gene knows yeah. most of you, Excuse your me. name and, and outlet. 
Yeah. Tim May, uh, LettermanRow.com. Uh, from your vantage point, what was the urgency to get this done now? I think it is, like you just pointed out the numbers. And for Gene, what do you anticipate any difference between what the NCAA finally comes up with and the bill, as you've read it now, or are they pretty much conforming from what you can tell? Yeah, sure, thank you. I'll answer the first part and then uh, let Gene answer the, the second one. Um, you know, for me, this has always been urgent. I mean, from my time at Ohio State, but I think, you know, now with sort of, there's a, a definitely a movement uh, occurring, I think, across the country with this. Uh, but look, you know, uh, you know, Ohio State and I, you know, have been working now for quite a few months now to to craft this. And you know, as of as of last week, we're we're finally ready. We wanted to do this right. You know, while we want students to have their right to earn compensation from their name, image, and likeness, we also want to make sure that student athletes are protected. At the end of the day, they still are students. And uh, you know, this bill, uh, as you will see when you get a copy of it, you know, definitely has safeguards up. Uh, that will make sure that this is done in a reasonable manner uh, and in a safe manner and in a manner that allows uh, the universities also to protect their students. Yeah, I think, Tim, the, the big thing is uh, there's a few more restrictions in the NCAA bill. Uh, this one gives us a little bit more leeway and flexibility, which I really em embrace. Uh, but there's the endorsement, uh, the uh, disclosure process is different. Uh, uh, there's a 15-day uh, process here where we'll have student athletes disclose. That doesn't exist uh, in the NCA legislation. There's a, the concept of creating a, a portal where student athletes will put up their deals whenever they're done, uh, 10 days, five days, whenever they're done. So there's no restrictions there. It's a little bit more uh, information around booster engagement uh, in the NCA legislation, of course. Uh, that is a big concern. Uh, but those, that's primarily the big issues. Uh, both of them re are silent on uh, prospective student athletes. Um, uh, there is a piece of uh, legislation around prospective uh, student athletes with the NCAA legislation, uh, but that was not recommended by the Legislative Solutions Group. It was recommended that that be pulled in order to work further with the national high school uh, associations across this country. Uh, but they can put that back in. So that's a, a few of the differences. Over here. Doug Maurice with Cleveland.com. Uh, question for the Senator. You said this is something that you've been passionate about or have thought about for a while. Why not introduce anything sooner than this then? That this is, obviously you mentioned all the other states that have done things. Was there ever a time when you thought maybe Ohio could have been a leader in, in introducing some of the first legislation on a state level about this issue? Well, you know, speaking frankly, you know, I think we started engaging in these discussions and then COVID happened, right? And you know, COVID, uh, you know, I like to think that, uh, you know, for my purposes that, you know, we can do all things all the time, but, you know, there became a health and economic crisis in Ohio that, you know, frankly derailed my legislative agenda. And so, um, you know, finally when, you know, things started opening back up and, and getting things done, I re-engaged uh, with the university in January on this and uh, and have since worked uh, with them, you know, hand in hand to, to craft the legislation you'll see today. Was it ever on your radar, like, before that? Was this something that, I mean, obviously we see a movement coming yeah. now, right? We understand that that has changed the playing field. Was sure. this something that you think could have happened years ago, though? Yeah, I mean, I think it, it was always something I had thought about. Um, but frankly, what, what changed it for me was, was California. Um, you know, once California passed their legislation, um, you know, I really started taking a, a hard look at it. Uh, and, and that really, you know, led me. But, but you know, speaking frankly, uh, things take time in the legislature. Uh, things take a lot of time. And, and so that's why we are here today. But, uh, you know, look, uh, while a one third of, of states do have it, um, you know, we'll still be, I think, in, in, the, in that, you know, cutting edge category. Um, and, and frankly, you know, uh, we are a little bit bigger of a state. We're the seventh largest state in the union. We've got major institutions like the Ohio State University. And so not only getting it done quickly is important, but getting this done right is important as well. And I think the legislation you see today does it right and also protects student athletes. Whitney Harding from NBC4. This is for Gene, but Senator, I'd love to hear you chime in if you have a thought. There is a fear from some that this will end amateur status and that it's going to start a slippery slope. How does this kind of tread that line to kind of make all parties happy moving forward? Well, if I can just weigh in quickly. You know, I would say I don't think it does because what we are simply doing is treating student athletes just like any other student, right? So 
uh, when I was in student government at Ohio State causing trouble, I could benefit from my own name, image, and likeness, right? Uh, my friends in the dance department could benefit from their name, image, image likeness. My friends in uh, music could, uh, and on and on and on. And so this now, understanding the, the size and scope of college athletics, that's why we're doing this right, why we're doing safeguards. Uh, but to me, I don't think this has anything to do with the amateur status. Rather, it's about students being able to express their inherent right to their own name, image, and likeness. Yeah, I think that was well said. I don't know if I can add much to it, except that um, keep in mind uh, that this is a great educational opportunity when you think about it. Um, and, and we, you know, our 960 plus student athletes, this is a diverse group of young people and each of them have different situations. So we'll have to teach this past year, 162 Pell eligible student athletes. Now, wait a minute, before you enter that space, what does that do to your Pell eligibility? Does it threaten that as well, at all? I remember a certain team I stood in front of and I asked them to raise their hands if they did their own taxes. Nobody raised their hands. So when you, I could just keep going on relative to the educational opportunities, uh, talking about uh, how you actually do a deal. Uh, when you see uh, our announcement later in the week about how we're gonna do this, uh, the reality is teaching our young people how to actually engage uh, an endorsement opportunity that would include possibly appearances, that could possibly include uh, autograph sessions, that could possibly include speeches to the employees of that organization, but also balance that with the time commitments that you have being an athlete and the commitment you have academically. So I embrace it as an educational opportunity, um, uh, but relative to your core question, the bigger question is not the amateur issue. The bigger question is the continued gap. The, can you, the continued gap between certain schools and other schools. That will occur. And my next question for you actually is about- You have to donate dollars in order to ask two questions. Uh, well, you Tim know. May knows that, but <laughs> I mean, I'm, it's I'm not just too, kidding. It's I'm not just too kidding. quickies, but <laughs> I'm just kidding. I mean, Go ahead. it's- <laughs> No. Um, along that gap line, there, for years people have talked about if you try to pay, this is not that, but if you try to pay student athletes, football and basketball would benefit while other sports, maybe not so much. How does this kind of allow those student athletes from minor sports allow to enter that space? Great question, and you drew the distinction. This is not a institutional pay for play. This is not pay, they're earning, the market is deciding and they're earning their own paycheck, their own value. Um, I personally believe that the Olympic sport athletes, and I know Joey's probably here in the room somewhere, he wrote a, wrote a great article. The Olympic sport athlete will actually benefit probably a lot more than some of the other sports. They, they are currently, many of them, leaving with debt, so their incentive is even bigger. And we're blessed because we have some exceptionally talented and gifted Olympic sports student athletes with the leadership of their coaches and others. I think they're gonna be really creative in this space. And the other thing is Columbus Central Ohio. We have a diversity in, in, in our businesses and the economic core of this environment. Our student athletes, will they'll figure it out. Good point. Thank you, I'm done now. Thank you, I am gonna ask if you have a follow-up question, if you can come back to the back of the line, we'll get to it. Yes, uh, Steve Hellwagon with 24-7 Sports. Uh, my question is mostly for Gene. Um, you have been so experienced with NCAA, legislation, committees, all these different experiences in your long career in athletics. Just, this is a great landmark moment for the state of Ohio, it seems like, but here's the other part of this. The NCAA has Division I schools in all 50 states. Uh, you play against each other in a basketball tournament. There's football. There's all these other things. Just how important is to get it a national standard on this? And where do you see that going? And when is that going to happen? Because until that happens, it seems to me and to a lot of people, Dennis Dodd has been on the forefront of this on CBS, just pounding the drum that this is going to be an uneven playing field for states that allow this and states that don't, how important is it to get a national standard on this? I mean, this is wonderful what you've done, but you got to have a national standard to have an even playing field, it would seem. Thank you. And if I can just, you know, say one thing is, is completely understand that. And, and I will say, um, you know, I will acknowledge that, you know, we in, in elected office, you know, the bully pulpit nature of what we do is true. Uh, and so, yes, I think, you know, we understand the importance of 
national legislation, either at the federal government and at the NCAA. Uh, and so, yes, I think today stands uh, as a marker to tell the NCAA uh, and the federal government that you know they should act. Uh, but even if they do act, I will say that you know these are still state universities. Um, they are technically state agencies under law, uh, and so you know there probably would need to be, regardless of legislation, the safeguards in place that we do put in, right? So you know the if even if the NCAA legislation, our restriction on you know alcohol, tobacco, marijuana, and, and casinos is probably something that would have to be done through legislation. The 15-day notification uh, to state universities is probably something that would still have to be done through state legislation. Yeah, Steve, you're right. I mean, at the end of the day, um, we need federal legislation. It, it has to occur. Um, and, and the senator said it well, it's highly unlikely it's going to occur uh, by July 1. Until then, until that ever happens, uh, we're going to have some level of chaos. Uh, all the bills are different. The ones that are in effect July 1, and actually there are some states who are looking to change the effective date to July 1. And so those bills are different everywhere from New York to Florida to California. So every environment is going to be operating differently. So you're, you're exactly right. It's going to create a level of chaos. Um, so I'm, I'm still hopeful that the NCAA rule comes into play and that might mitigate it to some degree. Uh, but you're, you're exactly right. There's, there's no answer to that. And, and I will say this, that because of that doesn't mean we shouldn't do it. That would be like legislating to the 1% or the 2%. We know that there's going to be unscrupulous characters who will cheat in this space. But you shouldn't deny the 98% because you know that. And so to me, we, we got to recognize that that chaos is going to happen and still provide the opportunity for the student athletes and the institutions who are going to want to do it right. But you're exactly right. Thank you. Andrew. Hello, uh, Andrew Welsh Huggins with the Associated Press. Um, for Director Smith, um, with your hat on, I guess, related to your day job, wh what are your concerns that uh, because Ohio is, is kind of in the middle of the pack getting towards this and that other states are about to enact these laws, what are your concerns that Ohio State itself may be left behind, at least in the short term, in terms of its athletes' abilities to um, receive this yeah, I'm, I'm not really concerned about that. I think we have a good plan for education in June, and frankly, our athletes have been educating themselves about that. We've actually had athletes who uh, who had waivers in the past through the NCAA in order to activate their NIL. So I'm not really concerned about that. Frankly, I think we're in a better place because we had an opportunity to listen and learn. Uh, half, if NCAA legislation passes, I think we're in a better place because we know what that legislation is going to be. There's some of my colleagues who jumped out too fast and they may have contractual agreements with third parties to actually enact NIL that they're going to have to backpedal on. And so um, I think we're, I'm not concerned about that at all. Uh, we are blessed with some very talented and gifted student athletes. We have an outstanding coaching staff and support staff. We'll educate them and, and they'll, they'll take advantage of this big time. Thank you. And quickly for Senator Antani, did you say July 1 for enactment? Yes. Is your goal to do this as standalone legislation in six weeks or to wrap it into the state budget? Uh, well, thank you. There, there is an emergency clause in the bill, Andrew, and so it is a standalone bill. And would need, because of the emergency clause, need to pass as a standalone bill because uh, even if we had an appropriation in there, only the appropriation would go into effect on July 1. And so... Uh, it is a standalone bill. Have you talked to leadership? Do you have the votes to do this? Uh, we're going to work uh, very, to very hard. Thank you. Hi, this is Danny Elder, Tana News Service. Um, so, so will students have to just do these deals, you know, on their own, or will they be able to join together to, as, you know, kind of like a union, or will they be able to work with agents? Can you talk about how how that process works? Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, so the bill allows professional representation. Um, so they could then uh, hire an agent, professional representation, I think we can safely call an agent, and so they would be able to do that. Um, or they can enter into contracts themselves um, without an agent. Um, I guess, you know, whether multiple athletes would do it together, I mean, they theoretically could under the bill language. Uh, the only, you know, again, restrictions are the ones we named, uh, as well as the 15-day notification uh, to the university. Thank you. Thanks. Austin Ward from Letterman Row Center. Can you describe 
why you put those restrictions in there. You have some NCA schools that already have formed sponsorships with gambling sites. You have some that have direct sponsorships with alcohol, um, beer companies. Why would the students be per not permitted to pursue something that the school itself can? Well, I think we have to remember that many of these student athletes are not 21. Um, and so, you know, for uh, Ohio just raised its smoking age, for example, and casinos are at 21, alcohol is at 21, marijuana is at 21, and but smoking is at 21. students that are above 21. Yeah, they are. But again, you know, I think we should seek to do this in a reasonable and safe manner. Um, you know, I don't see uh, any reason why, you know, they would sort of uh, need to engage in those categories. And while there are some above 21, uh, there are many who are not. And so, you know, to simplify the process, we restrict it. Gene, can you describe the way your thoughts on this whole issue have evolved throughout your career? Yeah, that's a great one, Austin. You know, I, I've been fortunate. You know, it's, this harkens me back to cost of attendance, and that was introduced in 2013 14. That ultimately got passed in 2015. Or even with our battle to, to get the uh, stipends for parents to be able to travel to postseason. Uh, contests uh, in 2014-15 and it actually goes all the way back deeper to the work program when everyone wanted to st restrict student athletes from from just working. Um, this this one sits at the top of the pyramid for me. It really does um, because I, I and, and you know everybody's going to talk about the the star and you know the Justin Fields the million dollar valuation but I, I have a huge affinity for our Olympic sports student athletes. I really do. Um, I know what they go through on partial scholarships. I know the time commitment they have relative to their sport, what they do in the classroom, trying to be a student and go to work. I mean, these are, these are elite athletes who are trying to cover an average of $27,000 a year, in, uh, I mean, over their time in debt. So um, this is at the top of the pyramid for me. Um, I, I wanna make it happen. There's gonna be a lot of moving parts. It's gonna be scary. Um, but we got to get it done. Nathan Baird, Cleveland.com. I guess for the Senator and for Gene both, what influence have the actual athletes themselves had, if any, in helping craft this bill? Um, did you meet with athletes, uh, current student athletes, um, in the process of putting this together? And do you think that's an important voice for setting up these, th this new space? Well, you know, I would say for, for me personally, uh, it's been very influential from my from my time at Iowa State, from my time, uh, you know, over the years and in the legislature. Um, you know, speaking frankly, you know, I think as far as talking to current student athletes, you know, I wanted to be very careful just to not, you know, sort of step into any NCAA restriction or uh, anything like that. And, and so uh, I personally uh, have not. But uh, look, you know, I think we, we legislate. That's what, you know, we do for a living at the State House. You know, I think this is a, a great bill. Um, you know, obviously, if student athletes have input, you know, we'd love to, to hear from it. But, um, you know, since we don't allow it and there's an NCAA rule that prohibits it, I think that, you know, we just have to be very careful in that space. Uh, obviously, this has been a cooperative relationship as the Senator Shed shared. So I've had a lot of input from our student athletes. And when you look at our bill compared to the other bills across the country, uh, we're less restrictive, frankly. And so um, actually the 15 day notification is strictly for protection, you know, uh, and I just wanna make sure that we give good guidance. Now, you know, one day maybe we don't need that, but at this point in time we do as we cascade into this new world. So um, I can give you countless conversations that I've had with student athletes around this space and, and uh, it's represented as we work together in this bill. ABC six, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Fox 28 for Gene, you may have touched on it right there. You talked about educating the students. I realize you're not going to broker these deals, but how much uh, oversight and management from athletic department resources are necessary to get this flowing. There's a lot there, Clay. I mean, we, we, uh, uh, we've been talking about this, and I don't know, Jen, we've had like countless Zooms. One of the things that we tried to do is keep our coaches and support staff, keep this in front of them as it evolved. Uh, but, and so our athletes have been talking and thinking about this, but it will take a lot. It will take a lot, you know, primarily for our first year student athletes. 
because they're drinking through a fire hose. You know, they're trying to figure out the whole world order. And, and the other piece is third party um, pressures that they may have to try and, and enter this space and do deals. So we'll have to help them uh, make sure that they do what's right for themselves and not for others. Uh, so that will be a very important piece in the education. But yeah, it would take a lot of resources uh, in this space. But we, you know, we've, we've dealt with this before. It's not like we haven't set up great educational programs and asked our student athletes to embrace it. So sure. uh, I'm excited about it, frankly. Will you have veto power? No, we will not approve or veto deals. We'll just help them understand the deal and how it's being set up. And then we'll also talk to them about how does that affect your brand with that particular partner and other opportunities that you have ahead of you? And so we'll just, it's all education. But if you want to go do it and do a deal with Clay Hall, go right ahead. But understand that that might negatively impact you relative to doing a deal with Austin Ward down the road. So you just need to understand that. And, and that's, I'm sure I'm probably right about that. But it's just a matter of having those conversations, which to me are educational opportunities. So I'm really excited about that part. Uh, Clay, just to, so we're clear, because you're going to see this in the bill, that there, there is in the bill that if the student athlete uh, proposes to enter into contract with a, a current uh, contract that the institution of higher education has, uh, then they are restricted. There, there's a sort of an arbitration process set up in regards to that conflict. They they can't, but there there there's workarounds there that could be done, right? So it's it'll be a conversation. Hi, Joey Coffin from the Columbus Dispatch. This is a question for for Gene more so, but if I know you are optimistic that the NCAA could pass something in June, if they don't, and if this doesn't, if this bill doesn't pass, and you have states like Alabama, Florida. Georgia that can recruit athletes and say, come to our school, you can make an NIL deal and you can't at Ohio State on, on July 1st. Do you, are you, is there a level of concern at all that you guys would be at a, at a competitive disadvantage versus some of your, your peer, peer schools? I'll just say this bill will pass, but. Your, your question is mute. It's mute, Joey. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, we got to, no, I, you know, I, yes, obviously. Uh, obviously, Joey, if, if we, are standing alone and we do not have this bill or have the NCAA uh, legislation passed and we'll be like the other 10 states and we'll be concerned. Uh, not just at Ohio State, for all the schools in the state of Ohio. Um, obviously with a flagship, uh, but uh, I'm concerned about all the other schools as well in this state and all the student athletes in this state. So um, we're gonna work very hard with the Senator uh, to try and make sure that he, whatever help he needs, we're gonna provide that help to him. Uh, throughout the state, throughout the Mid-American Conference, and, and everywhere in the state in order to help him get what he needs done. And uh, uh, then, obviously, politically, I'm going to continue to work uh, across the country to hopefully get the votes in the NCAA Council meeting. And forgive me for another hypothetical, but if, say, the bill does pass in Ohio and NCAA legislation is not passed, it would still seem like it would be against NCAA rules for somebody to make, make an NIL deal. How would you advise... Um, uh, uh, I guess, you, how would your compliance office advise current players then? Well, you know, I can tell you from, from the bill language, you'll see in there that it basically would make the NCAA rule unenforceable as far as state law goes. So it literally restricts the university from enforcing that rule uh, and restricts the university and the Intercollegiate Athletic Association, which I think we can safely say is the NCAA, from uh, restricting them from play, restricting them from scholarship, restricting them from pretty much anything. So we prevent that uh, in the bill. Thank you. We do supersede, that's right. Hi, uh, Bill Landis from The Athletic. I, I believe the Georgia bill has language in it about putting money into escrow accounts. I'm wondering if that was considered at all when uh, writing this bill and Gene, if that came up in your conversations with athletes about not doing that. Uh, we do not have that in our bill and it was not a topic of discussion for me. Yeah. Oh, Bill Rabinos from the Columbus Dispatch. Uh, kind of a flip side of Joey's question, more for Gene. If this bill is passed, Columbus is a large city. You already are a dominant program. How much of a competitive advantage will this be for you, given that the market 
is big, bigger than most Big Ten schools. I mean, how, how big a deal is that? Bill, keep going. But the, uh, no, you know, that that's the blessing. You know, our coaches want to hear that. That's a, that's a recruiting thing. And, and, you know, we're fortunate in Central Ohio uh, to have the growth that we are enjoying uh, from an economy and, and business point of view. So we're excited about that opportunity. But most importantly for me, um, and, and I'm sure the rest of my colleagues in, in the department would agree, it's the diversity. It's the diversity in the business. And so every student athlete is going to be able to possibly look at a different type of business. You know, we're going to actually try and educate our student athletes who are in the science field, for example, to try and look at partnerships in the science field. So we're going to we're going to do our best to educate those student athletes who may be majoring in fashion design to look at opportunities in the fashion design area. So we're going to do our best to try and help them understand that their relationships should be strategic, not just about the cash dollars at that point in time. The cash dollars today are important, but the future dollars are more important. And so how are you setting yourself up for the future? And so you're, we're, we're blessed to be here in Central Ohio with uh, all the different things that exist in our surrounding community. So yeah, Bill, you're hitting on it. If I if I may just just answer that as well, you know I think again I just want to underline one point that I that I've made is you know yes this is about you know great companies like Nationwide and Huntington, uh, but you know I want to remember that this is also for you know the the Ohio State player who is from a small town, uh, you know Josh Myers who is the center at Ohio State uh, just got drafted by uh, the Packers, you know he he's from my hometown he's a local hero, right. Uh, you know, and, and kids look up to him, right? Uh, you know, elementary school kids look up to him. Uh, he is known around the town, right? And so, you know, this is a way for him not only to benefit, but also to help local small businesses, right? To help that local, you know, mom and pop shop, uh, especially because he, you know, sure, he's a big deal in Columbus, but he's also a big deal back home in Miamisburg. And I think, you know, every single student athlete sort of has that story. Hi, Joe Ingalls with Ohio Public Radio and TV. Uh, question, does this affect D2 and D3 athletes? And if so, how do you expect schools to pay the cost of overseeing compliance at that level? Uh, we know that D3 athletes get no scholarships, so there's not a scholarship thing going on there. But if this starts at the top level, then the local car dealer in Delaware, Ohio might want an Ohio Wesleyan player on the front page, you know, doing something for them. So where does it stop? And how do you deal with the cost in those smaller schools of overseeing compliance at that level? Also, is there a central location that all athletes and athletic departments will report to, or is it kind of the Wild West? Sure. Uh, well, let me, let me start with your second question first. I, I don't think it's the Wild West, but you know, there is an under the bill no requirement for a centralized you know, database, it's university by university. This is really about the relationship between the student athlete and their university. Um, and so, you know, look, obviously the chancellor has oversight over the universities. This will be in state law, something that they will then have oversight over the universities over. Um, it does affect all intercollegiate uh, athletes in Ohio. Um, and, you know, look, I, I don't think for, for a university like Ohio State with so many student athletes, yes, I'm sure the compliance, but let's remember it's gonna scale, right? It's gonna be a scale a scaled economy. Uh, and so for a smaller school, it will obviously have a smaller impact. Uh, and so, uh, you know, there really also isn't in the bill that many, um, you know, sort of requirements. It's really this 15 day notification um, and, and then, you know, the conflict check, you know, et cetera. Uh, but that's really the one, right? Um, otherwise, it's more so restricting the NCAA and, and other intercollegiate athletic associations and the university from placing restrictions on their student athletes. And so, um, you know, look, uh, speaking frankly, the, the legislature, when we act, you know, the, the state institutions have to comply. We will help them comply. I have, uh, we'll, we'll be discussing this with, with every university across Ohio. And, uh, you know, if that concern is raised, we'll deal with it at that time. And smaller universities don't have the budget of Ohio State. They don't have people who can go yeah. in and do all this. So you might have one athletic director who's having to deal with this on top of about a million other things that they're dealing with. Well, I've been there before. You've never been to Ypsilanti, Michigan, have you? <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's not a, just about dollars, it's about people. 
and it's about your vision and how you work with people. And so the reality is pick a school, whatever school you want to. When I was at Eastern Michigan University, I didn't have dollars, but I had access to people in the in College of Business, I had access to people in the College of Education who cared about the education of the student athletes. This is not just a compliance issue. This is, you change your thought process and move it from compliance to education. And so whatever school it is, the AD, frankly, and the president shouldn't be looking at the dollars. They should be looking at the talents and skills that exist within their environment that they can bring together to help those student athletes. So everybody chases money. That's not the case here. The case here, as we will announce later in the week, is more about who's willing to help us help these student athletes do deals the right way. So in those environments, if they think differently, they'll find the help they need. Who's charged with overseeing the whole program? I mean, is there some- Each, each university it manages their relationships but with their But there's no state athletes. agency or no state you know, entity that- Yeah, this isn't, this isn't a state program. It's about the relationship between the university and the student athlete. We've got to end by 2 o'clock, so I'm going to do two last questions over here. All right. uh, this is Tina Bovenzi from Spectrum News 1. This question is for Gene. It seems blatantly obvious that the students would be really excited about this, but there are no students here to speak about that. Could you maybe speak a little bit about what they're, they're you know, reacting to you know, this news when you do Zooms with them and so on and so forth? And also, can you speak about how the power of, you know, say, the platform of the Ohio State football program or maybe a UD basketball can change some generational wealth for a for a family, you know, who may or may not go pro. Well said, great, oh, that's awesome. So uh, one, I would point out our women's volleyball coach, Jen, who could give you uh, some, some comments around here. But of course, our student athletes are gonna be excited about this. And the ones I've talked to personally, they're just, they're anxious, they're jacked up, they have ideas, they're setting themselves up. So uh, they're really excited about this. But to your point, there'll be a number of student athletes who will, who will change their families' lives. And, and, and the pressures of trying to pay the bills of higher education. Um, I can't stress that enough. You know, our swimmers, I mean, I just go through all the sports where they don't get full ride scholarships and tell you uh, those young student athletes are gonna, they're gonna be, they're, they're gonna be pretty good in this space. We're gonna bring you in to testify on the bill. That's a great point. Uh, Doug Lamarice from Cleveland.com. Everyone's talking about all the, the positives of this bill and, and it, the way you guys talk about it just makes like total sense. But it's too late for Braxton Miller. It's too late for Troy Smith. It's too late for Kyle Snyder. It's too late for Kelsey Mitchell. I know we, the process of history, we make progress as we go along. But Gene, you've been in this for a long time. Senator, you said you've been thinking about this for a long time. Why didn't we have this news conference 10 years ago? There was a time when it felt like the idea of a college athlete doing a commercial oh, no. was, was a terrible idea. And now all of a sudden in 2021, it's like, hey, it makes total sense. Couldn't this have made sense 10 years ago? Why did it take this long? Well, Doug, 10 years ago, I was a junior at Ohio State University reading your columns. Uh, so that's why it didn't happen 10 years ago. You know, look, I, I think you're right, um, unfortunately, Legislation is a process, um, and, and frankly, it takes a legislator uh, to, to do it. I mean, I wish we would have started this process, but you know, then the, the reality of, of COVID-19 hit us. Uh, but look, we are, we are working as swiftly as possible. Um, there is an emergency clause in the bill to be in effect July 1st. Um, you know, for, for me, as a legislator, you know, I think about the shoulda, coulda, woulda every day, right? Why did we not fix this problem sooner? Um, and, and frankly, you can kind of get down on yourself a little bit in that way of thinking. But the reality of the matter, the reality of the matter is we are here today. Uh, we've got the university in support. Uh, we're going to work very swiftly to get this done. And, and, and Doug, I think, you know, for those of us in elected office, when we see an injustice and, and students not being able to express their name, image, and likeness and have their own rights to that, to me, is one. Um, the only thing we can do is to act swiftly to create justice, and that's what we're gonna do. Gene, you've been around a while. Yeah, Doug, you asked a great question, but you've watched it, right? And so let's remember one thing. You know, we're different than the pros because we recruit. We recruit. And if you go back to cost of attendance, um, that was a big argument for years. 
you know, that, that so-and-so school is going to change their cost of attendance number and they're going to get an advantage. Have you guys heard about cost of attendance recently? But that was the fear, right? So recruiting is always in the room. And we've also had some principles that always got in the way that were antiquated, a level playing field. You guys have heard that before, right? A level playing field. Cost, this NIL was brought up in 2001, to your point. And so, so had the players in that room embraced it and learned like we did in 2019, it would have been in play. But the reality is the competition got in the way. And, and, and so to me, it's, 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 it's disappointing that we weren't there earlier, uh, but we're here. And we can, relative to our current and future athletes, it's a great program. So I think we want to thank all of you for coming. Those of you who asked two or more questions, the collection box will be around uh, for you uh, before you leave. Uh, and I want to thank all of you for coming. Thank you so much and turn it back to the center. Well, thank you, Gene. Just a couple of housekeeping items. If you need to stay for a little bit, I think we've got the room until uh, 2.30, 2.45 to file if you guys need to file your stories. Uh, Ricky and Abby right now, as you see, are passing out a copy of the bill as well as a, a press release. Um, we'll be sending out that electronically here shortly. Uh, but thank you all uh, for coming. Uh, and if you have any further questions, please do call, your, call my office. My cell phone number's on the press release as well. Thank you all.